Hey, good afternoon, guys. Real honor to have Jeff Scott today, CEO of ASAG. And the burning platform topic today is, guess what? Rise with SAP again. So, Jeff, have you arisen? <laughs> Vinny, I'm Vinny. First of all, uh, thank you for having me back for a uh, my second time here with you. Um, so it's wonderful to spend a couple minutes with you and and your uh, and your customers talking about Rise. Um, I am rising. I don't know that I've risen. Um, you know, there's there's certainly lots of puns to to play around with with this, and so we won't. You and I will not get you know carried away or levitate ourselves out of Rise this afternoon. I'm gonna going to throw them all at you. Um, you know, I, I will tell you that uh, I think one of the big differences in RISE over things that we've done in the past with SAP is we've actually been working on this with them for some time. And, and they were actually really good about bringing us in early. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we learn about things a week beforehand, which is really hard for us to relate to and respond to. In, in this case, you know, some of the early, early ideas were floated past us over last summer. Um, and then they, you know, kind of went away, thought came back and, uh, you know, it, it really, you know, ramped up in earnest uh, in the fall. We brought some of the board members in uh, from ASUG. And I think that, you know, when SAP talks about, you know, the way that they think about the user groups and the way they use them, I think the value add that we bring and why every customer who runs SAP should be a member of ASUG is it does provide a, a voice back to SAP and they listen to that voice. Um, you know, and uh, I was actually down in your hometown, uh, as you and I were talking about it over the Thanksgiving break. Super uh, we Bowl, did not Super Bowl. Super Tampa. Bowl. Here we go. Yeah, Tampa Bay. <laughs> I was down in Tampa over over the over the Thanksgiving break, and you know, my parents lived down there, and we were vividly, you know, being on the back of uh, the back of their lanai on you know intense conversations with SAP about you know some of the early stages of rise, and it's great to see it take shape and and fly and you know, be part of the conversation the last couple of weeks. So I think that there's a lot to talk about here. So we can blame everything on you then. Not well, good. only the good parts, Vinny, only the good parts. <laughs> um, anything you don't like that clearly SAP did not listen. And we tried, we tried, um, and they just, they just wouldn't listen to us. It was, you know, we tried for the okay. free. Um, we got some things for free. Um, but not everything for free. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take some victories when we can, I like but the, I mean, I, I like the one nice thing, deflect there. Yeah, I mean, you know, th I think that they've done a really good job with this program. And uh, I think this is, a, you know, this signifies for, for Christian, you know, his ability and where he wants to take SAP from a leadership perspective. And, uh, you know, kudos to him for putting a, what I think is a compelling offer out, you know, in front of the customer base to consider. So let, let me ask you this. When he starts off by actually taking a swipe at simplification, right? It's almost yeah. like that was McDermott. Um, but I wonder if it's too complex. So, you know, you've got S4. Well, oh, hold on, let me yeah. just lay it out, right? You've got an S4. You got yep. a cloud platform. You got yeah. SAC, yeah. analytics cloud. Now you've added on a BPI layer. Now you've yeah. added on Microsoft Stream, uh, Microsoft Teams. Yep. And wait, wait a minute, that's just the problem. Oh, wait a minute, you're... you're... <laughs> Well, because he, I'm, I mean, I'm exhausted he's, listening to this, Vinny. Okay, he's got SIs. He let yeah. off with SIs. Got yeah. ended with with the um, hyperscalers, right? Yeah. So it's like I can do this all for you. I'll manage all of this. I'll give you SLAs. I'll give you a contract that is one throat to choke. And I'm thinking, you know, between him and Jurgen and Thomas, these are smart people. They presented yeah. very well. But I look down two layers within SAP in their field. I look at their partners and I go, this is way too complicated. <laughs> we, we are to that, Jeff. I mean, well, if he had only focused on BPI, yeah. I, I would, okay, I, I can understand. I have some quibbles, but I understand. But it was just such a grand vision. Well, you know, Vinny, um... You started off talking about, you know, Bill McDermott's amazing legacy at SAP, right? And, uh, 
you know, Bill always talked about simplification. And uh, I think the world of Bill McDermott always have, and he and I have a wonderful friendship. Um, and one of the things I would say to Bill is, you know, Bill, people don't buy SAP because they have simple problems. They buy SAP because they are complex, multinational, multidivisional, you know, enterprises that uh, want to do things a certain way and they need industrial strength software to do it. And that's why SAP has been so important to so many of them and been so influential in the marketplace is it takes a lot of complexity, you know, to to do what you do. I mean, we can all sit here and talk about the simplicity of the Apple iPhone. And, you know, we all know as, as technology professionals that there's millions, if not billions of lines, probably not billions, but millions or tens of millions of lines of code out there that, you know, that makes something that looks simple, but behind the scenes is, is relatively complicated. And, you know, I, I've tried my hand at iOS development and programming as a, you know, a weekend hobby. And I'm way too old for it, Vinny. I, you know, it's complicated to write applications that, that run on that platform. So, I mean, you know, same thing's true with SAP, right? Is it a complex offer? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I would tell you that, it, you know, if I were to distill it down to its simplest parts, as, as you did, I, I would say this is about, you know, in, in many ways, it, it brings me back to the idea of where we were five, 10 years ago, right, where you would purchase ECC, and you would choose which database platform you wanted to run it on, you could, you know, you could pick you could pick DB2, SQL Server, Oracle, whatever you wanted, and you would you could purchase. You didn't have to. You could purchase a runtime license, and that would give you the ability to run it on the database platform of your choice. Is this any different? I mean, this brings me back, I mean, reminiscent of those days. And instead of it now being database platforms, it's hyperscalers. So if if you don't want to enter into a hyperscaler contract uh, and you would prefer to have that you know done as part of your SAP platform. I think Rise makes a tremendous amount of sense to you, and you should take a close look at it. I mean, to me, that that the beginning of the offer, you know, your ability to do that and the rest of the stuff comes along for the ride, to your point. BPI, uh, business technology platform. I mean, there's a lot of things in there, but, you know, they're all at introductory levels, so they, they're enough to kind of whet your appetite. But the the real the real main course of, of the meal is going to be where do you want to be from a cloud perspective and where do you want to be with a hyperscaler and, and what's your perspective there? And, you know, do you want to have that ability to take maintenance, licensing cost and hyperscalers and, and roll it into one, you know, fee that you have with SAP? And I think for some customers, that'll make a ton of sense and others will be like, no, nah, I, I don't want it. And that's OK. Right. That's OK. How about that? Did, did that? did that go okay? No, I, I think you presented it much better than SAP did. The, um, the, um, let's come back to that. Let's talk BPI for a minute. Yeah. You know, you, you and I have been in the SAP world for too long. Yeah. But I remember Professor Shear, right? That was BPM mm. with R3 and ECC. And I also remember integrators were nuts. Yeah. A lot of customization, right? Yep. So now you come along and say, here's BPI. And those integrators are hanging around. Are we opening ourselves up to S4 customizations? Well, uh, wow. Um, you know, again, where you and I started this conversation a few moments ago, you know, the customer base buys SAP because they are complex organisms, right, that, that do a lot of things. And, you know, if, if you can, you know, if, if you could run your business, you know, better on QuickBooks, you should run it on QuickBooks. But when you can't run it on QuickBooks and you need to run it on an industrial set strength, you know, um, system, you, you go to SAP. So I, I think that, you know, there are business cases for customization, right? There are rationale, you know, rationales for it. I think to your point, you know, many customers over time maybe have gotten carried away with it um, and are now looking at those, you know, decades old enhancements and thinking, why did we do that? Um, what was the reason behind that? And does that make and sense anymore? And that's helping the justification to move to S4, right? That's what retires with customizations. I, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good reason to get rid of, you know, clean out the attic or clean out the basement and figure out, you know, what are what do you have in there that you're never going to use again and get rid of it? I just worry that we're opening up to another wave of customizations. And, I, you know, I guess where I'm coming from, Jeff, is we saw in the summer People were saying, no big projects. Give me vertical functionality. Give me bite-sized functionality. Hey, Greg, Tom, give me your 
cloud yeah. apps, right? And this is still very S4 centric and they keep broadening the scope and, and yet nothing is vertical. It's still pretty horizontal, right? So that, that's, that hit me was like, uh, I don't know, man, this is too ambitious. Maybe they're thinking to end of 21 when IT budgets will open up. But right now the market isn't buying something that complex, is it? I think the market is shifting again, Vinny. Um, you know, we will be doing uh, an S4, you know, month of content as ASUG uh, starting in March. Um, and we wondered, we kind of came into that strategy and that planning process, I think to your point, a little concerned about, you know, what would be the customer and member appetite for that. And let me tell you something, Vinny, it has blown past our initial expectations. The answer I'd give you is there is a strong appetite for it and much stronger than me and the team had anticipated going in. So I, I think there is a, an idea that maybe we're coming out of the fog a little bit. Maybe, you know, things are starting to, you know, come back to where they were pre-pandemic. I mean, I don't think that's going to be an overnight recovery. I think that, you know, it's going to take time. But, you know, my general sense is that yeah, in 2020, no, people were not interested in having these dialogues and were very focused internally and where they needed to be to keep their businesses moving. My sense is that, you know, Periscope's up a little bit and folks are starting to look around again and say, okay, you know, maybe I do need to plan this. And I think so rise, I think comes at an opportune time where if you haven't made your move yet to S4 and, you know, we just completed our annual you know, ASUG Pulse of the Customer Survey. And there's a number of customers out there that haven't made the move. There's a number that have. Um, you know, let's go ahead and take a look around and maybe Rise is another vehicle which to say, you know what, there's something here that'll make me want to make that move. And I think that's good. So your point is they can start planning now. Why, why not? You make, make yeah. sense. Make yeah. Sense. You know, I think... Uh, you know, over time, the other analogy I've used, I'll come back to the iPhone analogy again, and I apologize for that, you know, uh, or, or take an Android device if you'd like and say, there, there you go. I think I got one here as well, um, you know, and say, you know, I, how I, long? Mine's better than yours. Mine's a 12 Pro. What do you have? Yours is always better than mine, Vinny. No, um, I don't have the Pro. I uh, thought this Pro is... me and said, this is a 12 Pro. You have a 12 Pro Max. I don't have a Max. <laughs> I, I do have a 12 Pro Max, Vinny. Oh, um, and yeah. the re honest, now, now there's a reason for that. And you, me, Jeff. <laughs> enjoying it. But uh, let's talk about the riveting, you know, the riveting topic at hand, you know, ERP migration from ECC to S4. Pick your flavor, Vinny, you know, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid, do it whatever way you want to do it. <laughs> so, you know, this is, I'm, 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 being, I'm being nitpicky here. But Kristen <laughs> kicks it off with the partner logos. Yeah. And I go, that's a wrong way to start. <laughs> Not because he shouldn't do that, but I wish he had said, you know, the integrators had to move to no travel, work from home. They had to do a lot more tooling, a lot more automation. This is a different breed of partners. He didn't mention anything on that. So to me, it was just like, well, I have all these guys. I have Accenture, I have Deloitte. They're going to help me. And that didn't make me feel very comfortable. So you think he just... Well, yeah. I mean, we know, Vinny, that, you know, most customers rely on an integrator of some way, shape, or form, right, to help partner with them to deliver the functionality. There's very few customers out there who have all the wherewithal and knowledge and, and resources in-house to be successful at a migration and a transformation of this magnitude. So, you know, the, the, the reality, whether fortunate or unfortunate. But Jeff, but Jeff, they cannot afford the integrator of January, 2020. Would you no, have? they can't. No, they can't. Um, you know, and, and this is, a, you know, you're poking at something that's, it's a, it's a good poke, Vinny. And I've had the conversation with Christian and I've had the conversation with Thomas Saueressig and Jürgen Mueller. And I've said, look, you know, I would love to see some of your AI ML technology pointed inwards to make your tool sets and your migration sets more automated. 
um, so that customers don't have to spend the integration dollars that they are spending to get this done because it's 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 a big multiplier on their licensing cost. Uh, we've had this conversation, well, and I agree with you 100. percent The good news is the integrators got a punch in the face, right? I mean, the pandemic really forced them to rethink no travel and all that. Why not push them and say, guys, you can't go back to what where you were? And yeah. I didn't hear anything on that, and I was a little disappointed. No, no, I, I, I'll uh, I'll concede that point. It's painful <laughs> for me to concede that point to you, as you well know. Um, but no, I, I I happen to think I'm um, keeping that. Score, by the way, I'm ahead three one. Are you ahead three one? All right, I got some work to do. You got the max over me, so you're three. Yeah, that okay. Um, you know, I I honestly, you know, uh, believe that you know one of the big big um, hurdles for most customers, you know, is is cost, right? That they're you know the customers that have not moved to S four thus far. What they tell me time and time again is they're having a really hard time with the business case. And, you know, a big factor going into that business case is the dollars it's going to take them to make the process transformations that you and I are discussing. And so, yeah, I, I do think that SAP can do more around helping customers move to the next generation of software in a far less painful way. And there are some things in the RISE offering, you know, their, you know, their analysis tools and analysis packs to help customers do some of that analytical work. Um, now, the question that I have is, you know, do the customers even have the tooling internally to run those tools to manage them and interpret the results? And from an ASUG perspective, you know, we're going to go to work to make sure that that education is out there and that customers can, in fact, look at that and make their own determination about how much integration work needs to be done. So let's let's hone in on BPI for a minute. Yeah. You've poured some of your members, right? What's the reaction to Signavio and BPI? Is Great it, question. Is it a yawn or is it a wow? So here, here's an example. Actually, we did a briefing session today. You know, you and I are taping this today. So when your audience sees it, it won't be today anymore. Uh, but uh, this morning, uh, we had a briefing session with SAP on Signavio and BPI. And, you know, I was uh, a little late to the game in inviting the ASUG board members to attend. Um, and I was reminded by SAP that I promised some of the ASUG board. And I went, oh, goodness, yes, I did. And we're 24 hours out from the meeting. And, uh, in, and I was like, this is not going to go well. Um, but what surprised me was we probably had about 80% of the ASUG board pop in and spend about an hour with SAP on BPI, on the acquisition, talking about how all this fits together. And, you know, sometimes the board can be very quiet in its, in its questions when SAP presents. There was a lot of activity today and a lot of really good questions of SAP about how to fit all this together. Not, not all of it positive, Vinny. You know, um, some of them were critical, but, you know, I think the area of BPI is front and center of at least 12 members of the ASUG board who were all fellow customers popped up and, and jumped to attention when this conversation came up and said, yeah, count me in. I want to hear more. And, um, you know, candidly, it's an area of the SCP portfolio that I am not as well educated on as others. Um, and my walk away from the conversation today was I need to get much better at it. Um, because it certainly seems to be an area of high interest amongst the customer base, right? Because RPA flows through it, AI ML flows through it, you know, and, and what they all said without, without exception is automation, process efficiency, the ability to take, you know, human labor out of the equation is critically important. And, and that is not any different than what I heard in other forums at the end of last year, right? And, and I think that's, that's the, the driver of this. And so there is interest. Which is why I think Christian was asked in one of the questions, is this HEC 2.0 or Leonardo 2.0? Um, you know, from a product perspective, the, yeah. the um, well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear the customers are not yawning. They certainly are looking at it, you know, a little more, a little more under the covers. 
You know, you, you have to be in a certain lane, Vinny, for Rise to make sense, right? And I think that the the early days, like all offerings, and, you know, we, I, I don't know it's fair to, to call this Leonardo 2.0. I mean, can, candidly, three, four years later, I don't know if you asked me to define Leonardo that I could. Um, you know, Rise is not necessarily a, a product, right? It's it's a pricing strategy. It's an offering that encompasses a lot. I mean, it's not a new product. It's just a new way of consuming existing products. Which is why, Jeff, I think I almost wish they had broken it out. Yeah. Here's the product part that we're enhancing with BPI and Microsoft Teams. Oh, by the way, the real big impact is the pricing, the hyperscalers, you know, better, better um, yeah. consumption models and so on. And they kind of commingled it and I, to me it made, it, made the message too complex. I, I think that um, to your point, Vinny, I think that um, the, the, you know, the, the presentation of Rise by Christian, right? It was really high level, right? And it was very, um, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it, it, it was philosophical, Right. It was talking about intelligent enterprise. It was talking about, you know, the future of businesses, the ether. Um, I think that's fair. Actually, my reaction was more. I saw a presentation by Thomas Kurian when he was an Oracle. Mm, now Google Cloud. Just brilliant, just brilliant because he could go through all the acquisitions. I mean, the, it was like an encyclopedia, his knowledge. Right. Yeah. Then I walked out of there and I went, my God, how many other people in Oracle could talk that way? Right. Zero. Yeah. Right? So almost well, when your vision, vision is that broad, you risk nobody under you being able to communicate. By the way, I think Christian does as well. I mean, Christian yeah. understands the DNA of SAP really, really well. Um, and, uh, you know, he he's put, I think, you know, an offer on the table that customers should take a close look at. Now, are all going to benefit from it? Absolutely not. But there's going to be a, a good cross-section of customers that I think should look at this. Um, if you haven't made a hyperscaler selection, if you're still thinking about where to go with your S4 implementation, this is something you should look at. If you've already implemented S4, if you already have hyperscaler contracts, you know, there might be a little less for you to look at and go, well, that makes sense for me. So, you know, I think your point's well taken that, you um, you know, are you in the sweet spot? And I think that's where ASUG can help. Um, you know, if you want to talk through, you know, tell me about this offer. Tell me what it means. You know, we have, you know, a number of people on staff as well as a number of our board members who are customers just like your audience who can walk through, you know, what does this all mean and whether you should take a deeper dive or not. Let's, uh, let's come back to that in a minute. Yeah. Let's talk about the hyperscalers. Hmm. You know, obviously we know uh, Azure and AWS, king of the hill, right? Uh, Google has done very well in the last year. Mm -hmm. Alibaba for Asia, pretty dominant. And then comes along IBM at the bottom. Yeah. And I was like, when did that switch happen? I know IBM is pushing hybrid cloud, but IBM? And why not Oracle? I mean, in fact, in the SAP customer <laughs> base, yeah, I mean, Oracle is a pretty dominant middleware database player. Is this, so, this, is Oracle going to offer to run HANA database on their cloud? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My, my, my question is, those are guidance, right? So customers are going to do what is right for them, right? They will yeah. look for CI for sure if they are Oracle committed, right? And so... I, I, I go back to, is SAP trying to be, you know, like you say, in the ECC world, it was an easy decision. Is it SQL Server, is it DB2, whatever, right? You had three, so maybe three primary to, decisions, yeah. SAP may be trying to make it similar. I think it's a lot more complicated than that. Well, I, you know, I, I like the idea that, you know, let SAP focus on where it really drives immense value. And that is the creation of enterprise software that, you know, is really core to most operations of businesses. And, you know, I, I don't think SAP um, and, and most customers would say that SAP's forays into infrastructure and managed services, um, you know, have not been, you know, as fortuitous 
and, you know, as positive as they'd like them to be. So, you know, and, and by the way, FCP is going through a massive transformation as it relates to no longer being a software company that writes code and ships it to customers and says, you take it from here, you know, we're going to give it to you, you know, God, gosh, you know, um, on a disc, I'm <laughs> going back way back, right, <laughs> or, you know, download it off the internet, right? I mean, you know, they're, they're now operating a lot of the software and, you know, Operating software is very different than creating it, as we all know as CIOs about the challenge of, of running your own data centers and running your own shops. And so, you know, for me, you know, SAP, do what you do really, really well, which is create this software and let others run the infrastructure. And I think that's I think that's what this is, you know. Let let Google, which you're spending billions, and Microsoft and Azure, and now apparently IBM. Let them, you know, figure out how to how to do all that other stuff. I'm not sure that it's that simple. I think they're worried, as should every application vendor, right? That those hyperscalers are taking over the platform layer, right? So suddenly, Oracle's uh, cloud technology platform, the SAC is at risk. So I think it's going to be a uh, headbutting uh, between the hyperscalers and SAP, but. Yeah. It's a new, it's a new, it's a new environment, right? Right, Vinny. I mean, you've got SAP now selling hyperscaler product, right? Um, on their own SKUs, right? But I mean, you know, SAP sold database product on SKUs sure. in the past. Sure. So, you know, I, I mean, you know, if customers want, I, I you know, I, I don't, I, I hear your commentary on one throat to choke. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know I love that analogy anymore. But, you know, if you're looking for, you know, some level of accountability from SAP to say, look, you know, you need to make sure that your, your solutions are going to run really well in a hyperscaler. Because by the way, you know, uh, you know, if, if it doesn't run well and it requires more compute or requires more storage, that costs on you, SAP, not me. Um, and I think that that's, that, you know, that's okay, right? What's the outcome? I mean, you know, we, we sometimes, Vinny, you know, we get, we get a little confused about business outcomes. And, you know, for, for most IT organizations, the business outcome is helping the organization make product that customers want at a price that drives a profit if you're in the for-profit business. Most, you know, most customers don't want to be in the, in, the, in the infrastructure hosting business unless that's their core product. So let's go back to ESA. Let's come back to you, sir. It's, it's less controversial. <laughs> it depends on the day, Vinny. It depends <laughs> on the day. Uh, as you do your research yeah. on RISE, I'd love for one of you guys to come present frequently. I'd love to get your uh, yeah. perspective out a little more in detail. Well, you know, we have about six weeks worth of our first tranche of content runs for about six weeks on RISE. Um, and our commitment, you know, to SAP is, as their largest user group, uh, is that, you know, we will do everything we can to help customers understand what RISE is, make good business decisions, help advise them as they move through that. Um, you know, we're, we're not, we're not telling you to go do RISE or not do RISE. We want to make sure that, that customers make well-informed, reasonable decisions. Um, our first tranche of content runs for about six weeks, and then we're going to take a look at where customers would like us to focus, and we'll run another six, and we'll run another six after that. Oh. We are planning. We are planning to do research, as you said. We're after the after the first six week run, we're going to go out to the customer base and do some surveys and ask them, you know, how's it going? You know, does this make sense to you? Where where do you still see gaps? And we'll go to work again. I look forward to that presentation in twenty five minutes. Yes. Means I'm coming back, so I'm I'm coming back for my third my third grilling from Vinny. I no, can't you, wait. <laughs> you can assign it to Dave Oscom or you know one of those four guys. They could give them twenty minutes and say, make sure Vinny gets six weeks of content in twenty minutes. <laughs> right, we can do that. We can give you six weeks. Of, we'll we'll just put it on high speed. You know, like you know, like a podcast. You, can, you can turn up the speed. It doesn't work so well on video, but I think you know we we'll turn it into a podcast, Vinny. Final Pleasure time. seeing you. Um, final thought is, you know, I think that Rise warrants customers who have not moved to S4. 
I think rise warrants a look and to say, hey, does this package, you know, help me get to the business outcomes that I need to get to faster? Does it help me do it at a lesser cost? And if the answer to that is yes and yes, go do. Great. Well, you 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 obviously coached them and you did a better job presenting it today. So. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> Uh, ouch. I'm not sure that's, that's true. I'm sure that as they, as they, you know, might look at my, they might have some difference of opinion. So, no, that, which is good. I, no, I, I thought Kristen Thomas and Jurgen in particular, fantastic. Like I said, very complex message. Though. Yeah. It's and a complex it, program. It, and you simplified it quite a bit today. So. Hopefully. Um, but I think there's a lot for customers to digest and, you know, your, your point, Vinny, I think I've said point well taken for you more than I ever have in any video I, I, interview I've done is, with you. My score is four to two and, you know, without the max, yeah. it's four to one. I, but I have, I have the iPhone max, so I win. Um, <laughs> no, you know, I, I think um, I, I think it is a complex program. It's fair to call it that. And, you know, customers should take a discerning and careful look. And I think many will find that uh, it has pieces and parts that that really make sense. Thank you, Jeff. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Vinny. Always great to see you. Congratulations uh, hey, to your hometown. You know, come down and come and take some box photographs. Well, yeah, I, you know, I'm up here in Chicago, Vinny. It's done nothing but snow and freeze for the last two weeks. So uh, I am ready. I am ready to get out. Anytime. Good to see you, my friend. Good anytime. You. We'll have to wear masks, but anytime. Come on yeah, down. Any, that's